voice is becoming a more and more popular way to interact with your AI agents and AI automations. And Eleven Labs has come out with an amazing conversational voice AI agent. Here, I've created a voice AI agent named Alex. And now I'm gonna run some simple code to interact with this agent. Hey there, I'm Alex from AI Health Support. How can I help you today? Yes, I would like to start a strength training program tomorrow. Awesome. Quick question. Are you just getting started with strength training or do you already have some experience? Okay, so after they're done speaking, they're gonna wait and listen for us. And after a certain amount of time, then they'll say something again to make sure that we're still there. And if I let her go, she'll respond to what I just said. Got it. Sounds like you're describing a back and forth where you okay. want to make yep. sure Okay, yep, so this is one way. This is the simplest way to get started. But what I wanna also show you how I did and what is maybe the best feature is that they allow you to use that code as a widget on your website. So here in Bolt.new, I created a very simple Fit Pro Health. This took literally three minutes to make. And then in there, whenever I asked it to create this, I gave it a snippet of code, which I'll show you how to here soon. I asked it to put it in here, it did. So down here on the right, on the bottom right hand side, if I click this, I'm going to accept the terms and agreement and I can start chatting with the same agent. Hey there, I'm Alex from AI Health Support. How can I help you today? And this is really easy to make no matter how you're using it. And I'm gonna show you how to do all of this, create your agent, how to give it knowledge so that it can know what to say as part of that conversation, and then how to use webhooks so that after the conversation is over, you can retrieve all the information, including the transcription summary, and then you can save that for later use. And we'll also be creating an agent with my voice. Okay, well, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to 11labs.io. You're gonna log in if you haven't been here before. It's okay, you can do, you have about 15 minutes worth of every month of conversational AI agents with a free plan. So you don't have to worry about paying just yet. You can see if you like it or not. Okay, so then at the on the left-hand side here, you can see we have agents. So you're gonna come over to agents. We're going to create a new agent. And you can start out with like a personal assistant or a business agent. Let's just go ahead and choose personal assistant. And how about we choose learning companion? Okay, we're gonna give this a name, Tyler AI. The main goal is to learn about AI automation. Okay, so then we're gonna go create agent. Okay, and so there's quite a few things we can do here. So the first thing is you can choose your language, you can give it additional language. This is the first message that they're always going to, whenever they're activated, that they are going to say. So you can go ahead and change this if you would like to. Then what they have is they have this, this kind of personality, this, or the system prompt, but they have like six different things that they like, like you to put in here. So you have personality, environment, the tone, the goal, the guardrails, and then any tools that you would give this agent to you, such as MCP servers. So what you could do with this is you could take this, you could copy it in ChatGPT and say, hey, you know what? I want this specifically for learning about AI. Can you just modify all of these sections just for that? And then you could come back here and paste that in here, or you can paste whatever else you want in here as well. You can choose the LLM that you want. Obviously the better one you use, the more it costs. So for right here, GPT-40 is three cents a minute. And I think I saw one yet, yeah, GPT-4 Turbo is 11 cents a minute. The example at the beginning, I used Gemini 2.5 Flash, which was you know less than a tenth, like about a 10th of a penny per minute. And then you can come here and you add the, do some more information. So on the tools here, you can have them end the call. If you know, you can ask them to end the call, to have detect language, it can transfer to other AI agents. So you could layer agents depending, you know, depending on what you're doing. So you have like a secretary agent that can go to like a support help, your support desk help, whatever that may be. Uh, they, you can play key, uh, keypad touch tones, um, give the ability, agent the ability to play uh, these touch tones during a phone call. Like I said here, here's custom MCP servers. We will get to that in just a bit. But after this, then what you can do is come over to voice and you can choose the voice that you want. So if on the free version, if you're using the free version, I don't know if you'll have all of these, you know, I'm on a paid version. So what I've already done is I've actually created my own voice already. So you can have multi-voice support as well for something like multi-character interaction. Uh, and then there's some more things here that I don't, I don't think that you need to worry too much about. 
I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And then what else you can do while we're here. So if we go over here to data collection, you can have specifications to what you want to exactly extract from conversation transcripts. So if you're on a sales call, you look for specific things that they've said, such as like, like, you know, they, they are willing to buy, um, they are interested, you know, anything, anything, then it can make sure to get and look for those specific data. And then you have security. Don't worry too much about this, but then we'll get to this in a minute after we create our app, like I already showed you, but this is the code that you would paste to put into your website. And then we have knowledge base. And what this allows you to do is you allow any documents that you have about whatever uh, your agent is about, whether support agent, or in this case, learning AI. So if I wanted to teach more about crew AI, I could put crew AI documents here so that it has that knowledge. If I were to ask questions about that, so I'm actually going to copy this URL from crew AI documents about crafting effective agents. So then I'm going to come back here to my knowledge base. I'm going to click the add URL, paste this in, add the URL. It's going to, I assume it scrapes that, and it's going to add this as knowledge for our agent. So here you go. Here is all of that information. Okay, so I can exit that. Okay, so now I just want to test this really quick so you can just kind of hear and see what it's like. So I'm going to choose test AI agent up here. So I'm going to call the agent. I want to specifically ask for something here. So I want to ask for why agent design matters. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. Hi there, I'm excited to explore the world of AI automation with you. Why does agent design matter? That's a fantastic question to start with. Agent design is super important in AI automation because it's all about creating systems that can perform tasks efficiently and effectively. Think of it like designing a tool. A well-designed tool makes a job much easier, right? In AI automation, good agent design means we're building smart agents that can understand instructions, make decisions, and complete actions with minimal human intervention. This can lead to huge improvements in productivity and accuracy across many different areas. What are your initial thoughts on why making these AI agents well-designed might be so crucial? Okay. And so there we go. There is an example of it. Now let's see how we can actually use this in code. Well, here in this code, all I'm doing is grabbing my 11 labs API key and my agent ID. That is the ID for the specific agent that we just created. Okay. And then we just have a default audio interface. This is how I'm going to set up the conversations to have the of a client, which is basically an 11 labs client, the agent ID, and then we want to have an audio interface. And these are just some callback responses, um, to kind of like how, how we're going to have that conversation. This is just, that's just default stuff. And then we just can start the conversation and then wait for that session to end. This is very simple. Now for the agent ID, where do you get that? Well, back at 11 labs, when you're in your agents and here, we just created this Tyler AI. I'm going to just copy and paste this agent ID right there. And then you could just paste this in right here or have a dot env file where I paste that in there. So I just want to verify that my agent is working and I can speak to it. Hi there. I'm excited to explore the world of AI automation with you. Okay, great. We know that it's working. So we are good here. We don't have to keep going, but this is how simple it is to set this up. And by the way, every conversation that you have will be back in 11 labs under the evaluate and conversations. So you can see everything that we have all, all of the interactions that I've actually had today. Now I want to create a website on teaching AI automations and I want to have this personal assistant of mine that we just created as part of that website. So I want to go back to my agents in 11 labs, go to Tyler AI, go over here to widget, and then I'm just going to copy this right here. But before you do that, I just want to show you that you can modify this. So you can, you can have like various, how big it's going to be like right here. So you can have tiny compact full. I'm just going to have compact. You can place like where you want it. 
uh, top right, top left, you know, whatever. I'm just gonna you. I'm just gonna do bottom right where it was. Um, you can have like a link, image, orb, whatever. I'm just gonna have orb. You can modify the color. You can do a lot of things here. Okay, but I'm just gonna keep a lot of this default. And I'm just gonna copy this code snippet right here. So I'm in this point. I'm not actually gonna code anything. This is gonna be completely no code. I'm gonna go to bolt.new. I started a prompt where I'm going to, where I, I told it, I need an AI automation and AI agent tutorial website that delivers and teaches how to use these things. I also wanna have my personal assistant with this widget. So I'm just gonna paste this widget in, hit enter, and now it's going to create a website for me with this personal assistant as part of that website. So it's gonna create it, take a minute. Okay, so it created this website for me in just a couple of minutes. You know, this I, this is my first time looking at it too. You know, none of this is actually really filled out, but this is actually actually a pretty good website to be honest with you. I really love Bolt.new. But besides that, uh, now what we can see here at the bottom right, we can start a call with our with our AI agent that we have as part of this website. So I can just click this call button. Hi there, I'm excited to explore the world of AI automation with you. Okay, so what can you tell me about Crew AI? Crew AI is a really interesting platform that helps businesses automate their workflows. It uses artificial intelligence to streamline tasks, making them more efficient and less time consuming. Have you heard of any specific ways you're hoping Crew AI could help? Or are you curious about its general capabilities? Okay, so I just ended the call. That was so simple and I didn't do any coding and now I basically have my own website. I have a separate video on this, but you just come in here to publish. Once you publish this website, then you have your own you are secure URL that you can use with Netlify. Okay, so now what I wanna talk about is there are some interesting things that we can do with this, right? So let's say you have an agent that calls people for you and after the conversation is over, well, you can have webhooks and that essentially means that after the conversation is over, you can take that conversation plus other information from that, including the transcription and the summary, and then you can save that and that can be a part of another automation. In order to make this work locally, we have to have a, a secure way in order to retrieve that webhook. So there are a couple things that we have to do. So first off, you can go to ngrok.com, sign up, you get a free secure URL that you can use. You're gonna come in here, you're gonna go to Mac OS. I mean, I'm using Mac OS. If you're using another platform, you would go through the steps for that. I'm just gonna do install ngrok, add this config, and then we're gonna go to my static domain, or actually I'm gonna go to domains. I'm going to create a new domain because you get one and you'll get one some you'll get like a different one like this it, it, you know it's again it's free but it is secure url that you need to run this and what i've created for you is a start webhook server so you can come over here just start you just run this then what we're going to do is i'm going to have an ngrok command for you to run so once you run this what this does is now you have, instead of your local host being this HTTP four zeros and then 8,000, it is now a secure public URL. And what I'm doing is I'm waiting for that webhook. So in my webhook server, I have this post slash post call here, which we are going to create in just a minute. Whatever this happens, first off, ensure that the webhook exists. If you don't have a webhook secret, that means that literally anybody can listen to this URL. If they have the URL, they can listen to it and also retrieve your information. So you have to have a webhook secret, whether you're using code or no code, it doesn't matter. You should always use webhook secrets. Then we're basically getting the, we're getting the payload from, from that webhook. Then we're deciding if it is a call transaction or just a post call transcription or post call audio. It could be both by the way. And then we're going to handle uh, taking that transcription and also handling the audio. And we got there because back at 11 labs, if we go to settings and uh, settings in 11 labs, we can select a webhook. And then what this does is whenever you come in here, when I, whenever, well, let me, let me just create the, this again. Let me, let me just go ahead and paste this or just have this so I can remake it. So I'm gonna select the webhook. I'm going to create another webhook. So this webhook name is Tyler Agent. I'm going to paste this URL in here because this is my free ngrok URL. This is the API endpoint, and I'm going to use. Um, I'm going. To, I need to use HMAC so I can get a, generate a shared secret. So once you hit create, you are going to get this secret. You're going to copy this to the keyboard. 
you're going to go to your .env file and paste it in there. You'll see this whenever you get the code. And once you paste that in there, the only the you will be the only person, as long as you're the only one that knows that secret, that will be able to get this webhook or anything from this webhook, even though anybody could try. But because you have the secret, it'll verify that the secret that you have is valid, and then you will get the information. So that way, that it's that is a secure way to use the webhook. Okay, so now let's see this in action. Let's go ahead and start another call, just have a simple conversation, and then I'll show you what happens, what you can do with the information after the fact. Hi there, I'm excited to explore the world of AI automation with you. Yes, if I wanted to master AI automation, what is one, one tip that you would give me? That's a fantastic goal. To truly master AI automation, my top tip would be to focus on understanding the underlying principles of both artificial intelligence and automation separately before diving into how they work together. This foundational knowledge will make it much easier to grasp the more complex concepts down the line. What aspects of AI automation are you most curious about starting with? We could begin with what AI automation is or perhaps some of its most common applications. What are its most common applications? AI automation has so many exciting applications across different areas. Some of the most common ones include customer service. Think about chatbots that can answer frequently asked questions or virtual assistants that help customers with simple tasks. Business processes. AI can automate things like data entry, scheduling, and even analyzing large amounts of data to help make business decisions. Manufacturing robots powered by AI are used on assembly lines to perform repetitive tasks with high precision. Healthcare, AI is being used to help with tasks like analyzing medical images or even assisting in robotic surgeries. Does any particular application spark your interest? We can dive deeper into any of these or explore others if you'd like. AI automation and kickstarting your AI agents, or maybe you could even be a part of the conversation whenever you need human in the loop. Something I've been doing more lately is actually creating AI automations and AI agents to subtract time from businesses. So whether you have a large school community, you have a large YouTube, you know, you have a large YouTube base, you have, you are a small business, you're a big business. It doesn't matter. I have helped quite a few people and I'm here to help you. So the goal is to subtract time from you so that you only use your time to make more money. Cause that's the goal. We all want to make money, but how can we make that an easier process? Well, that's what I'm here to do. So if you meet one of those criteria, leave, there is a link in the description below for you to make a call with me. I will be here to help you. So with that said, Thank you for watching. I really appreciate all the support that you guys have given me. Like I really enjoyed making this video because conversational AI agents, I believe are really becoming more popular and that we should be using them more often. All right, I'll have link, links in the description below. Leave a comment down on what you think or what you would like to see next or what would actually help you out. Thank you for watching. Here's some more videos. I will see you next time.